Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. We are back here at the Dawson House with our handheld radio that we haven't entirely picked up the, the use of. I am going to get these deadbolts, these padlocks, I should say, get these padlocks and find a breathing apparatus if it kills me. And I feel like this handheld radio is the only way to do that. A woman's voice says, Clarence, I'm so grateful that our family has never suffered from supernatural curses, serial murder, demonic corruption, or plague. I agree, dear. We certainly have been fortunate and doubtless will remain so. Oh my, Clarence! Why are you lying on the floor under your workbench? Are you alright? Were you attacked by a burglar or an axe murderer? Calm down, Agnes. I'm fine. I'm just practicing changing the oil in our car. Wait a second, is this the bench that woman on the radio was talking about? Dolphin padlock key. Okay. Alright. So I just need to be a little more thorough with it all. Alright, I still need to find out what exactly this, which padlock this key unlocks. Here. Oh. Remember, Ralphie, you mustn't open the door to strangers. A boy's voice replies, Okay, Mom, because it might be a kidnapper or a murderer, right? Well, I'm sure that would never happen, but it might be a vacuum cleaner salesman, and we already have one. I need to use the radio in every room. That's what I'm learning. Ralphie, why on earth do you keep flushing this fish zester down the commode? Have you been possessed by some otherworldly or demonic force? No, Dad, I just thought it would be a funny place to hide it. bandage. Heal for 10 and remove on fire. Okay, cool. Um, no breathing apparatus there. Please be careful around the kitchen knives, Rebecca. They're very sharp. I keep them that way because counterintuitive though it may be, dull knives actually cause more accidents. Yes, mother, I understand, the little girl's voice replies. Anything in the sink? Ugh, this fish in a sack is going to be worth so much. Nasty old leftovers. Cool. There's still nothing under the dome. Um... Door, second floor. Mom, Mom! A terrible ghoul stole the key to my nightstand! Now, dear, don't call your brother Ralphie a terrible ghoul. He probably hid the key in the potted plant in the hallway like he always does. Aha! Key to the nightstand. Recovered padlock and a creepy music box. This is a creepy music box, which is to say it's a music box. All right. Oh, and the music stopped. Who stole my golden arm? Ah, oh, come on, sis. Don't you know any other ghost stories? That's the only one we ever tell. Unlock it. Oh. I pressed this by accident. You hear a man's voice scolding angrily. For goodness sakes, Agnes, you're obsessed. Obsessed with taping things to the backs of paintings. Just like your aunt, one eye called Pernia Dauphin. You'll probably die peacefully in your sleep just like she did. All right, just unlock this. Perfumed wedding veil. This will come in handy if you ever decide to save money by getting married at the city dump. Ooh. Nothing here. All right. Oh, 
look behind the painting. Got the key. All right, now I just need a padlock that this key can unlock. out of places. Alright. Anything in the attic? Okay. Nothing in the attic. Okay. I'm searching this place so thoroughly. Padlock. The tool chest contains one tool and one key, which I guess also counts as a tool, albeit an extremely specific one. The tool tool. Two tools, then. Oh, gee, is it that blood all over the... Oh, no, it's just rest. Never mind. All right. How many padlocks do I have? Ten. I just need one more. Unlock it. You open the cabinet drawer and examine the stacks of fine bone china. Wait, bone china? Perhaps human bone china? Oh no, the brand mark on the bottom is a pretty well-known company, so probably not. Anyway, you find a really fancy hat. Fine china helmet. Plus four to magical weapon attacks. Okay. Okay. I think I have all of the padlocks I need. So... I'll go back to the sunken box car and please, Mr. Dauphin, give me, give me a breathing apparatus so I can go into your basement. I found your father's padlocks. Thank you so much. You didn't run to my grandmother by any chance, did you? What? No. Was she supposed to be there? No, that would have been highly unusual if she had been, considering she died more than 30 years ago. Here's your padlocks. Marvelous. Once I have reaccustomed myself to standing on level ground, I'll be on my way. There's a big hobo camp near Ocean City that you might be interested in. I can give you directions. Ah, excellent. I think I will head that way now. Perhaps I'll see you there? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go meet him at the hobo camp then. Um, hobo camp. Music lesson. Okay. Huh, there's an old gravestone here. Pepperidge Dauphin. What the heck? Pepperidge Dauphin died 150 years ago? Then what was the man? Was the man in the box car? At Hello again. Ah! Did I startle you? Dreadfully sorry. Pepperidge, you're alive! Well, yes. Was that in question? This gravestone says... No, no, this is my great-grandfather's. I was named after him. I decided to bring it with me as another souvenir in addition to my father's padlock collection. Well, that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> He's still talking sideways. How's it going, Pepperidge? Quite well. It's a very nice little community we've got here. A marvelous first step on my new path as a world traveler. Nice, I hope that goes well for you. I'm quite certain my travels will be completely free of danger or violent misfortune. Let me ask you something. Do you know any hobo code? I have learned some since my arrival, yes. Least I can do after the help you've given me. Here, I'll write it down. He writes something down on a scrap of paper and hands it to you. Hmm. I don't really understand this one. He takes the paper, rotates it about 30 degrees, and hands it back. Ah, got it. Something else? All right. Uh, he still can't tell me his secret plans. Dang it. Okay. Okay. 
I'm just giving everyone another little talk to. I think I've already talked to everyone about all these things. Yeah. Beans, Mossman. Yeah, that's everybody. Creamy Steve, did you enjoy that rock candy I gave you? Okay. I'm still completely, completely stumped as to where I'm supposed to find this breathing apparatus. But... I just want to check this out because Margaret Ocean City Comptroller. Hmm. Okay, not much we can do here. Let's head on back to Gray County and actually head out on this quest we need to take. I'm glad we at least managed to finish the Dolphin quest. If we... If we can't do all the mob stuff, then at the very least we can get all the hobos. That's... That's still an option. Okay. So... We have a few, um... Side quests, but first thing I want to do... Oh, I can't check out the defunct... The defunct Bud's Burger Barn location. Damn it. Okay. Well, let's go to the Gilmore house first. Oh, hey, kitty. There's, there's a tourist spot not far from here. A real traditional old windmill. windmill. Want to go have a look-see? That doesn't seem like something you'd be into, Molly. It ain't. But if I go another minute in this place with nothing to look at but smoke and oil wells, I'm going to flip my lid. What's inside? Junk mail. Nature's bounty is being violently extracted by this monstrous There's a page of what appears to be a diary tacked to the tree. Dorothy keeps giving me socks with holes in them. She can't possibly be trying to humiliate me deliberately, but it's far too consistent to be random chance. Huh. An old plowshare is leaning against the tree. It's a plowshare and you're keeping it all to yourself. The door says Belgrand Bombproof Shelter Home, and it has a serious combination lock on it. No bomb's gonna guess this one. Right, we're gonna have to find the right combination somewhere in here. Nine reps, you can do it! There's a loose page from a diary on this table. Edith's violin is too loud for me to relax at night, but if I take it away, she screeches horribly. I wonder if I can find her a smaller one. Huh. Work out! Yay! Yay! An animate doll doing a workout routine? I'm sure it's fine and nothing to worry about. There's a book of children's horror stories on this childless man's table. Maybe it's for the dolls, or maybe it's for you. Scary stories for spooky children. Use spooky armor. Okay, I could probably use some spooky armor. Yes, it's very low. This book was banned at school when you were a kid. The principal didn't think stories about dentists eating patients' teeth were appropriate for children, which is funny because that's exactly what ended up happening to him, and then you did have to hear about it. Dare you read on? Dare. The first story is too gruesome for words. Literally, it's a full-color illustration of alligators squeezing into a school bus through the exhaust and eating all the passengers. Chilling, and all the more so because it could really happen. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Spooky armor. The second story concerns a group of children who trade baseball cards at school. It's all fun and games until the baseball players pictured on the cards come to chill kill the children. This one really happened. <laughs> Oof, you remember hearing about this one. A boy wakes up in a coffin six feet under. This terrified you as a kid. Now you're more disturbed by the part where the boy gets out of the coffin and spends the next 40 years self-medicating his trauma until he dies of alcoholism. Okay, I think that's good for now. How much spooky armor do I have now? Six. 
it's up on par with the rest of them, except for hot armor. Just like a bunch of creepy glass eyes in the doll parts box. Horrible little mouths. Must correct Velma's mechanism so she'll squeeze the toothpaste from the end of the tube instead of the middle. I'm losing a fortune in wasted paste. Huh. All work and no play makes eight pages a day. This doll is scratching out gibberish on a tiny sheet of paper. Oh. Can I check out the radio? Yay, I only need two more. Okay. One of those newfangled plastic handled toilet brushes you've read about in all the papers. Muscle plus six stench damage and causes three poison. That's pretty good. If I want to replace my current weapon is still pretty good but I have stuff that can add increased damage so yeah this is pretty good I'll have to think about it for a little bit before I decide to actually change my weapon but if you don't brush a full three minutes brush for three minutes Something is effective with Ruth. She's doing twice as much of everything as she thought she ought to be. I must have gotten her gear ratios wrong. The sink is currently occupied by a creepy talking doll expressing the value of good hygiene. As long as you don't stand with your back to that doll, this seems safe to fish in. Handful of clean water. Soggy use bandage. Okay, I I don't think I'm going to find the solution to the breathing apparatus here. Four eggs are part of a complete breakfast. Ah, hey, nestled among them is the spring that Wendelin wanted. You don't see what's so special about... Oh, wait, you were looking at it backwards. Yeah, this is a special spring, all right. Is she throwing eggs at me? This bitch throwing eggs at me. I'm stuck in a rut. Every day is the same routine. Eat breakfast, get dressed, brush my teeth, exercise, work on my novel, go to bed. Over and over. Always the, th the same. I thought the dolls would help, but they've only made things worse. I feel like I might go crazy. In fact, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I think I'll start right now. Fruity Ice Pop. Increases hot armor by six. That's pretty good. Box of wafered corn cereal. Increases max HP by 9 and max AP by 1. The name and composition of this breakfast cereal are chosen specifically to avoid infringing Kellogg's trademarks in an effort to avoid litigious hauntings. Yeah, and if you don't know, the name dropping of Kellogg here uh, is not just a reference to the real life cereal. Kellogg was a character in the previous game, West of Loathing, who was a parody of the real life Kellogg. Someone left the stove on. The talking doll is throwing eggs at you from atop these cabinets. Alright, I have what I came here for, but I want to explore a little bit more. doll size chemistry set. Okay, I have all of the things from my house. Oh my god, why do dolls even need hearts? This is just pointlessly creepy. A ru ru rubber rubber plant. One of the dolls must be allergic to real rubber plants. A diary peeks out from under the pillow. I don't feel well. I think Gladys put something in my coffee. Not just eggs like she always does, accidentally. I believe this was purposeful. Perhaps I shouldn't have based their mechanisms on that strange old doll I found. Grace, I wonder where she went. Huh. This doll is playing a violin in a way that makes sleep unimaginable. You only need two socks at a time. Hello, dresser. <laughs> Address the dresser. Abigail loosened the pins on my barbell. I nearly dropped it on my head. She's definitely trying to kill me. I think they all are. Hellstrom can have the house and the main property. I'm going into hiding. First, I'm going to tack these pages all over the house and make it clear that I'm insane, and then I'm going to go live in my bomb shelter. Scratch that. It's a doll shelter now. Just doll arms. Dozens of awful little arms. If you're quick, you can probably grab those socks without getting eaten by that creepy doll. Fancy dress socks. Oh, they're all saying numbers. They are all saying numbers. I 
bet if I go left to right here, I could get the code. Eight, three, eight, three, four, eight, three, four, eight, two, eight, three, four, eight, two, nine. Eight, three, four, eight, two, nine. No. Okay. Um. Well, I can tell that the numbers have something to do with the code, but I don't know what order to put them in. Um. Um. Oh. Ruth is doing twice as much of everything as she ought to be. So which one is Ruth? This is a logic puzzle, I think. Okay. So we read a page about, okay, I think by process of elimination already, I think that Ruth is the first one, the one who's writing because all the other ones, they talk about bell bars, they talk about eggs, they talk about socks. They talk about the violin. This is the only one that's not talked about. So I think that she is Ruth. So the first number should actually be four. Four, three, four. Four, three, four, eight, two, nine. Four, three, four, eight, two, nine. No. Dorothy. Edith. Hold on. Maybe the other ones have clues. A smaller one. Velma. Which one is Velma? Velma is doing twice as much of everything as she ought to be. Okay. Gladys put something in my coffee. Alright. <sighs> okay. I am quite certain that I am on the right track here. But, I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong. Four, three, four. Four, three, four, eight, two, nine. Four, three, four, eight, two, nine. Okay. It could be that it's the order of pages. Dorothy. Dorothy is two. Two, four. Two, four, three. 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 Two, four, three.
four, three, four, nine, two, four, three, four, nine, eight. Two, four, three, four, nine, eight. Two, four, three, four, nine, eight. Okay. I'm totally stumped about this. I know, I am quite certain that the dolls have something to do with the combination, but I don't know what the order would be. Unless the junk mail has something to do with it. Oh, I need the letter opener to open mail? Okay. I'm gonna go over this house one more time. A smaller violin. Um... Alright, so he gave, he gave her a smaller violin. And he did something to the one with, um, my current thoughts are that it could be four, no. Never mind. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that maybe the other pages could be hinting about... Like... Which dolls need... To be oh goodness I think I might have an I another idea okay this is the this is the this is the order breakfast four eggs four two three four two three nine hold on I'm gonna type this this is the order yes I finally found it um Hold on, I just need to find open my notes app. Four, two, three, nine. Work on the novel. That's half, so it's four. Four, two, three, nine, four, eight, I believe. Yes. Okay, I think that's the order. I think that's the order. Four, two, three. Nine, four, eight. You hear a click? Yes! I did it. I solved the puzzle. I'm smart. I'm so smart. <laughs> you hear a click from inside the massive steel door. Looks like you got it. I mean, sounds like you got it. Hi, guy. The man cringes and backpedals frantically as you approach. Stay back. How'd you get in here? Did the doll send you? Oh, calm down. The dolls didn't send me. Then who are you? What do you want? My name is Vivian. You must be Gilmore. Wendland sent me over to see if you had a content calculus mainspring. I already found it, but I thought maybe I should check in on you here. You've been in the house. Have you seen the dolls? Ah! Look, they're a little creepy, I guess, but they're not that bad. They're just dolls. They're trying to kill me. Yeah, I saw your diary pages, but honestly, I think you're overreacting. Diary? Oh, you mean my novel. Novel? Yes, I've been writing an epistolary novel in diary form about a toy maker who goes crazy because he thinks his dolls are trying to kill him. Ha. Huh. And he nails the pages of his diary around the house and hides in a bomb shelter in his yard? Right, exactly. Okay, so you aren't actually scared of your dolls, you're just acting it out, like method writing? 
No, no, the dolls are trying to kill me, just like in the novel. I'm not a psychologist, but I think I might be suffering from extreme confusion. You aren't the guy in the novel, you're the guy writing the novel. That's two different guys. The dolls aren't trying to kill you. Are you sure? You just freaked yourself out by writing a scary book with circumstances similar to your own, that's all. Maybe you're right. Okay, okay, I'll come out just as soon as I finish the last chapter. Alright, good luck. The last diary is unfinished, but it seems to be about the protagonist huddling in his bomb shelter and waiting for the dolls to come get him. Grim. Silver pairs of Gilmore's undergarments are strewn about on his bed. You were caught unawares by his caught underwear. Okay. Okay, we did that. I don't really know what I got out of it, but... I'm glad we found the guy and helped him out a little. Okay. A dozen eyes wink and two mouths make kisses from within a squirming corpulent blob of crude oil. This is very rude of the blob and it likely only feels comfortable in being so because it's protected by a circle of electrified shale spires that spark with lightning. Harness the lightning. I don't want to fight. This episode is pretty long and I want to get back to the guy who's in the spring. Anything can attract lightning if it's the tallest and pointiest, pointiest thing in the area. Drawing upon your deep command of the arcane, you jump up and make a steeple above your head with your fingers. The lightning abandons the spires and nestles in your bones. Not feeling so big and strong anymore, the blob bows in apology and shuffles away. Plus one mysticality. I love it. Hey guy, we got your spring. Ain't suppose you found the counterclockwise mainspring? Well, I'll be. Thank you kindly. Seeing as you've proven yourself the helpful sort, I'll have them let you in the store. Pretty much all of us around here got a thing or two could use doing. Swell. If that was sarcasm, I hear ya. He gets up and knocks an odd pattern on the door to the feed store, and you hear someone inside remove the bar. Thanks! So I guess I just needed to do a side quest to get inside. I met that Gilmore guy. Oh, how's he doing? He was hiding in his bomb shelter because he thought his dolls were trying to kill him. That's a shame. Figures, though, don't ever put a face in a machine. People get confused too easy. Even just giving one a name is a bad idea. Guess so. Hellstrom, nothing new there. I'll be seeing you. Okay, so I didn't really realize that that was what we were trying to do in that quest. Get inside the tax store. But... I'm pretty satisfied with the progress we made in that episode, I, if I say so myself. So next time we will go inside the feed tax store. I have been Mars, and I will be back with more Shadows Over Loathing.